So howdy folks, we're back here on the 51 Ford project and I got a package from our friends at Heights. This should be our drop spindles. So I bust this baby open and I'll show you what we got. And what we have here is, voila, our drop spindles. So now what this should do is this should raise our wheel center line up two inches which will lower the vehicle two inches so what we're going to do next is uh get the vehicle into position and start swapping these spindles out so let's get at it okay so we've got our vehicle into position so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take our brake calipers off and as usual, we won't break open the brake system, but we will tie them off over here to the side, out of the way. Then we're going to take our uh, dust cover off, and we can get, take our uh, brake rotor off, and then we can work on getting the spindle off. So let's go. Okay, so I got my caliper off. I tied it back with some mechanics wire. I pulled my dust cap, my outer wheel bearing, and off comes my rotor. Now what you're going to see here, is the difference in my spindle like this is the bottom of my spindle see where this is see where my wheels gonna be it's so much higher so now we just gonna pop our uh, steering rack and our ball joints loose and we can uh, swap out our spindle so I busted my ball joints loose got my nuts off with this particular air spring setup we don't have a spring tension on it so we don't have to worry about compressing the spring we can just go ahead and lift this right off and that's what I have. And uh, there's my spindle. I can swap over my other pieces and um, get ready to put the new one on. Okay, so I took my uh, spindle, I changed over my uh, bracket for my caliper, and uh, now I can put my spindle on. So now you can actually see how much higher my wheel center line is going to be. So I'm gonna get my nuts on here. Now I'm not gonna make this a permanent installation because I'm gonna to wanna to paint all this stuff. I'm, I think I'm gonna to have to modify my lower control arm a little bit, but I'm not sure. So this is really just kind of a trial fitting. So I'm gonna get my nuts on there, get my rotor on, and um, slot my caliper back on just to make things easy, and uh, move on to the other side. Okay, so we got this side's all set. Like I said, I've just got the stuff. This is just really kind of a mock-up, so most of my stuff is just just slightly snugged up. I'm gonna move over to the other side. I'm gonna repeat the whole process and then we'll have drop spindles on the front on both sides. So let's go. Okay, so now that I got the back end down as low as I can get it, I'm actually, my exhaust is just an inch off the floor. So that's where my customer's gonna want it. Now I'm working on the front. I put my drop spindles on. I got it down pretty low. I need to get one more inch lower. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that with the small camera on the other where the other shock mounts to the control arm the way that that mounts i'll be able to drop it down an inch i'm going to show you all right so here is my setup you can see my shock comes into the control arm here and to make this lower what i need to do is to get this shock to drop down through this control arm so if i pick this up like this you can see now my shock comes down through, so I need to make some bracketry to provide that to happen. So my thoughts are this. I got my control arm right here. Flip it over here on the bench. What I thought was, um, I'm gonna make a plate to go across here and with a couple of brackets that'll hold my shock at the height I want. And then I can bolt my shock and it'll poke through and I should be all set. So here is my what my setup looks like on my bench. I made these two spacers that hold my shock where it's supposed to, where I want it in this frame. So now, like I showed you before, I want this shock to protrude through this control arm and then I'll need some brackets to hold the shock like this. So what I came up with was I figured I'd make a plate that goes across the bottom of this control arm. So I made a template out of this piece of cardboard and I made a hole in the center of it so 
so that my shock has plenty of clearance to drop through along with it's wide enough for my spacers and my um, shock to drop through and be in the right spot. This piece of cardboard I can also use as a template and flip it over and use it on the other control arm. Okay, so here's my cardboard piece. I took and cut it, used it to make a template, made this piece of steel there. Now I'm gonna cut this center piece out and uh, I'll probably drill a hole and cut it with the plasma cutter. So I've got my plate cut, I got my hole cut in the center of it, and now I'll probably have to trim up some edges to get this thing to fit on this control arm nice and tidy. But I've got plenty of clearance on the sides and my, you know, where my bushings go. My shock is going to be able to come right up through here. I don't have to worry about my shock or my airbag contacting anything or creating any problems. So at this point, I'm looking pretty good. Now I just need to make a couple of brackets to hold my shock to that plate. Okay, so here is my driver's side. And you can see this is how the setup goes. The bolt just goes through it. So this is a sway bar bracket here. I'm not running a sway bar, so I just went ahead and cut that off of the other side. Over here, you can see where I made my plate and I got it tacked in. My shock is coming through and I made a couple of L brackets that I'm gonna use to hold my shock in place. Now I just gotta get it into position and then I can tack weld it. And I'm gonna make it so that I can still use the upper position once I get this thing centered in here and then I can tack it, kind of set it down, see where, you know, how the truck sits and make sure that I'm going to clear everything that I need to clear. So here we go. I got my, uh, my front suspension mocked up. I put the wheel on. I put it on these tables. Now this is the lowest position up front. And then you come around here to the back. The back is already all done and this is slammed. I'm right up against the frame in the back. So this is super low. So this is the look that I'm looking for or my customer is looking for. So now I'll be able to raise this up and I'll show you uh, what I get going on under there and uh, what needs to happen next. Okay, so here's my setup here. You can see where I have my brackets. I tack welded those in. I got my spacers in and I'm still able to raise my shock up and use this through bolt so I can use my suspension at the upper position. That way there I have two positions that I can have my suspension at, super low or low, however you want to look at it there. So over here on this side, we're basically going to do the same thing. We're going to drop this out. I'm going to make the same plates, the same brackets, all that stuff, and make this one identical to the other one. And then that way there, both sides will be riding at the same height. It'll look just the same. So I'm going to get to work on that now, and uh, we'll get going. Okay, folks, so we're back here on the 51 Ford project. What I have is I have a little bit of a clearance issue with the airbag and the K-frame mount. I'll bring the small camera over, show you what it looks like and what I'm gonna do about it. So let's go. Okay, so here's what we bolted on. Everything's good there. Up here, I have this problem. My airbag is almost or is going to touch this part of the frame. So I'm gonna have to trim this out and I'm gonna trim this out uh, basically like I have this piece of tape. So I'm using this as my guide. So obviously that's the area that's got to be removed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole in the corner of that tape and then I'm going to cut on the line. Obviously I have to remove all of this, these, this airbag and the tire and all that stuff. So I will uh, get at that and then I'll show you what it looks like after. Okay, so here's my mock-up. What I did was I used my transmission jack to compress the suspension. Now my air spring is in and you can see I drilled a hole and then I made my cuts from there. I always drill a hole that way they don't have to worry about cracking on the corner. Now I have plenty of clearance on my air spring on all around on this side and all around the, on this side. So nothing is contacting my air spring, so I'm good to go. Okay, so here's a better view of it on the other side. So if you look back here, I got some light for you so you can see where I made my cuts, drilled my hole, and have my clearance. Now I see it's got nice clearance on the front and the back, so I'm good to go. So this is my bump stock plan. So I made this piece of tubing, welded it to the frame, and you can see I gusseted it 
with this triangle, triangle bracket and I welded it to my spring perch. Now over here on the bench, I've got my control arm and I made this bump stop to go on my control arm that will contact my piece on the frame. Turn this over. Okay, you can see these are my brackets for my shock. I welded my plate all the way around and that's where my shock's gonna protrude. So I'm looking pretty good there. So here is my mock up here. So you can see I got my lower control arm in and my bump stop fitting against here. So what I'm doing is I want a nice even contact from bump stop to bump stop. So I'm getting that adjusted here. I'll tack weld that piece and then we should be pretty good to go. And this will be my fully compressed height here when I'm fully aired out and it'll be on this bump stop. Okay, so here's my full mock-up. You can see where my bump stop is contacting my bump stop on the frame, and I have it adjusted. Now, if I need to lower it, I could cut a little piece out of this, put a plate, put a bump, put a rubber bump stop, whatever. That's good and solid. Now, um, if I have to, I can put a cap on that or whatever. I'm not really worried about that right at the moment, but I do like the way that these two pieces fit together. Now on the other side, I got plenty of clearance, nothing's touching my bag, so I am good to go. Meanwhile, over here, I want to get this side all dialed in. So as you can see, I got my control arm on here on my jack, and this is my movement, and this is where I cut out the frame right here, made my notch so that my airbag wouldn't hit. So now, what I need to do is I need to make sure that I'm going to have the same height on my bump stops on either side. So I need to make a piece here and get it to the level that I want it to be at and then I'll make my other piece here that's going to go on the frame and then I can make some measurements and make it the right height. Okay, so here we are and I've got my bump stock uh, that goes on the control arm fabricated. I just use a piece of the square stock, cut one side of it off, make these notches and it'll drop right over the control arm like this. But I wanna make these bolts exposed for my other shock mount. So I gotta kinda of play with it, cut these notches, refit it several times. But then I get it to the point where it'll fit pretty good. But then I'm gonna have a situation where as the control arm comes up, this angle is gonna change. So I need to get it to where I want it to be, get the angle right, and then once I have that, then I can take, put my other piece up here and get my measurement so I know I'm at the right height and I can tack these pieces together. So that'll be my next thing. I'll get my piece and we'll figure this out. Here we are back. I've got my bottom piece sitting on my control arm like I want it to, okay? Uh, I'm gonna wanna take a measurement from my spring perch to my stop and make it the same as the other side. So that so it fully compressed, I'm at the right height um, when I'm aired out. So now I want to make this bump stop on the right angle for my piece coming off the frame so it makes a solid contact. So what I need to do is get this right even on the frame, get it level, get it where I want, get the bump stop to contact nice and evenly and then once I get everything all aligned perfectly I can take my welder throw a few tacks in there and then I should have it all set okay so we're back here and I got my pieces in and lined up and I put a few tacks like you can see on this bottom control arm and then I got four tacks that are holding the piece coming off of the frame here now I've got my control arm positioned so that I'm at the right uh, compressed height as the other side. So now what I got to do is, you know, do some final welding. I want to weld this to the spring perch over here, and then I want to make my gusset to the frame to reinforce this so it's nice and solid. So that's going to be my next thing that I got going on now is get this all welded up and good to go. Okay, so we're back here. 
I welded my piece up on the frame. You can see it, it's here. I welded the top, I welded it to the spring perch. I got it welded all the way around to the frame rails and I got my gusset made and welded. So that'll make it nice and strong when the control arm comes up and impacts that. Now down here on the bottom, I did all my final welding and uh, I tacked it on both sides. It's nice and even and I'm all set. So now when I pick this up and I go all the way up, I got nice even contact with my control arm when I'm in my aired out position and my measurements on both sides are the same. So, I mean, at this point, if I needed to do any adjustments, I could always just notch out my bump stop here a little bit, put a plate on it like I spoke of on the other side. But to be honest with you, I think that we're pretty good to go on this side. I'm gonna mock it back up and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, okay so here we are back. I reassembled all of the suspension. So shocks are in, everything. As you can see, I ground up all my welds. I got my shock bolted in, bolts are all tight, everything's good to go. I am all welded up on my bump stop on the control arm. I've got my bump stop on the frame, all welded, gusseted, everything's all cleaned up. I got plenty of clearance, I'm tied into my spring perch. This is super solid. This is looking really good on this side. Over on the other side, same scenario. I'm all welded solid, ground smooth. We're good to go there. My bump stop's good on the frame and my gusset's there. Now, the other thing I got here is I got this brake hose. I don't want that to get pinched in between, so I gotta come up with a you know a loom clip or something to get that out of the way but that's uh that that's not a big deal i'm not too worried about that now now i think i'm going to drop it down and we'll see what this thing looks like when it's on the ground all right folks so here's what our 51 ford looks like it's sitting down on the bump stops that i fabricated and it is slammed to the ground pretty much as low as i can get it at this point the exhaust headers are about a half an inch off of the floor. We're on the bump stops up front, we're on the bump stops in the back. At, from the running board to the floor, I got about two inches. From the exhaust to the floor in the back, I got about an inch and a half. So as far as I'm concerned, it slammed. I had to use a jack and some blocks to get it off of the lift. That's how low it is. But uh, as you can see, it's got a great stance and uh, I think it looks really good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise it back up. I'll take all the pieces back off of that front end. I'll get them all prepped up and painted and then we can put the vehicle back together again. Then we can start working on some plumbing. I'm waiting for a battery box to come so we can move the battery from the bed to underneath. Then we can put our tank in the back. We can get our pumps mounted and uh, air tank mounted and get it wired and get this whole thing functioning. So stay tuned.
So our frame is all been primed, base coated, and clear coated, and I'll show you what's going on. Here's one side, here's the inside, looking pretty good, and then this side over here, and then the outside. So, at this point, we'll let all that dry, we'll go back to work on the front, and then we'll, uh, you know, once it hardens up a little bit, we can reassemble our whole back and get it all plumbed up and done. So, keep it at it. Okay, so we're back on the 51 Ford. I got all my stops are all been cleaned up. They're all painted. I based them, I cleared them. All my parts are in the booth. I'll show you those. We're gonna reassemble this whole front end. And so let's get at it. Okay, so these are my control arms and my spindles that I painted for the 51 Ford project. So I got all my tape all stripped off of these and we're gonna start reassembling this. So first thing I gotta do is I gotta throw my ball joints in, get my little control arms on, get my shocks in place. Then we can put the spindles together and uh, go from there. Okay, so this is what we start off with. We got no control arm on here. Our stop is all made and painted. Now we're on the other side over here. I've started the assembly. Okay, so I got my control arm. I got my, my lower ball joint is installed. I got my through bolt in here and I've got it tight. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my shock in. Take this, get my shock mount there. Shock's going to go in there like this. I'm going to get a wrench, tighten that up. There we go. So that's there. Now, I'm going to want to get my bolt set up here. My shock mounted on the bottom, got my shock mounted on the top. This is where my airline's going to come off and go to my compressors, my tanks. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to get my spindle, get that on here, and I'll weave my brake onto the other side because of the way that this hose goes. Then I'll get my top ball joint bolted to my spindle. And then we'll uh, work on getting the rotor and the caliper mounted. Okay, so here's our whole setup. It's all done. I got my my caliper, my rotor, my spindle, everything is on. This thing turns just like it should both ways. I have um, secured my rubber brake hose so that that's not gonna chafe on anything or touch anything I don't want it to. I got my airbag where I want it. I'm gonna bring the small camera over. I'll give you a good look at what it looks like now. Okay, so here is my underneath. You can see now everything's all cleaned up. It's mounted, it's painted, it's all buttoned up. This is my stop right here. And then here's the other side. You can see how this is all set up over here. My airbag, I got my brake line out of the way. And uh, so that takes care of my front. My back, you've probably seen before. Here's my four link. And then here is my air shocks here on either side. All right, so there she be. I got my whole suspension, the mechanical portion of it. And then the next phase of the operation is gonna be plumbing the air, the tank, the compressors, all the air lines, and then, of course, the electrical. But stay tuned. Uh, please like and subscribe, and good luck on your project.